there! This is the first lecture for aquatic entomology. I'm really excited to talk to you this quarter about benthic macroinvertebrates. We'll talk about insects, but we'll also talk about other types of invertebrates. Uh, my name is Carrie Leroy. I'm a freshwater ecologist here at the Evergreen State College, and I've been studying aquatic macroinvertebrates for about 20 years. Uh, my PhD work involved identifying lots of invertebrates from Arizona. So I'm excited to talk to you about some of those bugs. I'm going to use bugs. I'm a pretty, yeah, uh, a loose term, right? Like bugs. Um, we'll talk about the meaning of a true bug um, in this lecture, but I'm going to talk to you about all of the different kinds of cool critters that live in aquatic, freshwater aquatic working, um, ecosystems. So here's just some really cool pictures of some of the types of um, insects that you're going to learn about. Um, some hemipterans and some beetles, some tadpole shrimp, um, another hemipteran, which is a true bug, uh, damselflies and dragonflies. Um, this is a dragonfly or a damselfly larva, actually. And so here's an example of the taxonomy that you'll learn about this program. So this damselfly happens to be a cerulean dancer and its genus is Argia, its species name is Anceps, and its authority is Garrison. So Garrison was the first person to name this organism, and so that it becomes the authority. So if you haven't heard that term before. It's really commonly used with plants, um, but we're gonna try to use the authority when we can. It's in the family Cenogrionidae, um, it's in the order Odonata, and the suborder Zygoptera. In the class Insecta, it is an insect, in the phylum arthropoda, meaning jointed legs, and in the domain eukaryota, just like me, right? And just like you. All right, so um, that's just a brief introduction to the taxonomic hierarchy. And as we go through this lecture today, I'm going to focus a lot on the order, okay? So we're gonna be learning about the order level taxonomy. Um, we're gonna also learn about a lot of non-insect invertebrates in this program, but not today. So these are some of the kinds of things that I'll talk about in future lectures. So flatworms and hydras, roundworms and mollusks, worms, moss animals, moss piglets, like tardigrade, and a lot of different types of crustaceans, along with other things. But, so keep in mind that these are non-insects and we'll be talking about them um, variably throughout the quarter. So the class Insecta means cut into sections, Latin for insectum, and um, it also comes from the Greek root entomos for entomology, which also means cut into sections. Okay, so only insects have six legs as adults, and most animals on earth are insects. More than 1.5 million species of insect um, are known to date. Insects, we think, involved, uh, sorry, evolved on land and then reinvaded the water, okay? So there are lots of adaptations to living in water because of this kind of evolutionary history. And the insect lifestyle, um, there's a lot of different ways to be an insect. So in terms of development, you can be an ametabolous organism, meaning that you don't have any kind of metamorphosis. You can be a hemimetabolous organism, which means you go through an incomplete metamorphosis, okay? And um, exoterogotes are organisms where their juveniles resemble each other, and then later instars resemble adults, okay? So they just kind of change gradually from juvenile to adult. So they go from an egg to a juvenile to an adult, okay? So that's a hemi, that's hemimetaboly versus holometaboly, which is complete metamorphosis, where you're an endoterogote, where you start as an egg, you become a juvenile, you pupate, you go through a pupal stage, and then you become an adult. Okay, so that's complete metamorphosis. And we have both um, hemimetabolous and holometabolous aquatic insects that we'll learn about. As an insect grows, it molts. And these are called instars, okay? So you start off with a small instar and then you molt and you get to grow a little bit. And then you, some organisms might molt and go through like seven different instar stages, okay? So um, some entomologists call larvae holometabolous juveniles. And they would use the term nymph 
for hemimetabolous juveniles. Our book doesn't make that distinction and calls them all larvae. But if you wanna know why sometimes you see the term nymph instead of larva, that's the difference between hemimetabolous and holometabolous insects, which I think is kind of cool. So here's an example of a mayfly. And a mayfly is hemimetabolous. It becomes, it's an egg, it gets laid, it goes through multiple instars, growing bigger with each molt. And eventually it turns into an adult and flies away and lives for a very short period of time, lays its mates, lays its eggs, and then dies. Um, that would be similar to what we see here for uh, oops, a stonefly, okay? So we have eggs, a nymph going through instars, turning into an adult, and then laying eggs. This would be different for a holometabolous organism, like a caddisfly. You start off with eggs, then you get larvae, instars, but then it turns into a pupa, and it pupates, and the, this is the stage in which it turns into an adult. Okay, so the pupa then uh, metamorphoses into an adult in the complete metamorphosis life cycle.